Hi everyone, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to video 11.1 .1, where we will explore a few emergent models for workplace learning. There are only two items on the agenda and we'll spend the majority of our time examining four models that may be put into place in the future. There are two analysis questions for this video. How do you envision workplace learning programs in the future? And what do you think the evolution process will be? Social tools are changing not only the way that professionals are working and learning, but also the way that organizations are transforming into social businesses. Humans are inherently social. Almost everything we do tends to be driven by our need to be connected and stay connected with each other. This is particularly true in our Web 2.0 world. Organizations must respond to the demands of employees' social media savviness and their need to engage via social learning. Such organizations are transforming how they support employee learning and go beyond merely offering training solutions. This is often seen as continuous performance support, which helps employees learn as they work without disruption to their workflow. You may wish to think of this as responsive or intuitive, EPSS or PSS. In 2012, Jane Hart created the Workplace Development Service Framework to help organizations understand what the future may hold so that they can be at the forefront and create new services, tools, and platforms to support employees. There is little doubt that implementing such a framework would impact the entire organization as new skills and mindsets are required at all levels of the organization. There are three areas in the framework training services, PSS, and social collaboration. Jane Hart sees an overlap in these areas because none occur in isolation, and to some degree, each affects the other two areas. The most important element is the learning needs. Learning needs are embedded in the workflow and have an impact on all elements. Interestingly, social collaboration services is the largest element, and this element is not always under the organization's control. Today's smart employees are self-motivated to learn and don't wait for an organization to create appropriate training solutions. They have the self-efficacy to seek out information, people they can work with collaboratively, to learn from and learn with, and connect with others through sharing what they know and learning new information. Learning from others does not necessarily happen within the bricks and mortar of a workplace, as this has moved to the global online sharing environment. In 2010, Rob Gill put forward a human resources framework for using computers to enhance employee engagement in large offices. The research is based in Australia, where they have the Employer of Choice program, which is a business award that recognizes organizations that have developed leading workplaces that demonstrate effective employee recruitment, engagement, and retention. Although the program and Gill's framework do not speak directly to workplace learning, the framework includes many issues we've examined in this course, such as leadership, staff development, and community involvement. This table illustrates various development opportunities that can be delivered via computer-assisted learning platforms to solve employee issues related to the variety of organizational characteristics. At first glance, the framework may appear a bit dense, but if you pause this video and briefly examine the table, you'll see that it is broken down by section. It is beyond this video to talk about these sections in depth, but please do spend a few minutes reading through the table to gain a basic understanding of the framework. A link to the paper is also included in the course site. The key takeaway from this table is the identification of the desired employer of choice characteristics and how these characteristics are both issues and opportunities for development. Clearly, training does not need to occur face-to-face -face or in person, and, according to Gill, computer-assisted learning can provide many solutions to the problems organizations and employees face in the workplace. Although this framework is a few years old, many of the elements presented in the table are appropriate today. After reflecting on the table's contents, which elements do you believe are relevant and which ones are dated? In 2011, Paul Griffin put forward a conceptual model of workplace learning based on five elements. A pre-learning stage, the trigger or needs of learning, application of learning, and impact of learning. 
Griffin notes that few organizations actually evaluate the effectiveness of their employee training programs, which we discussed in week seven. With this model, Griffin introduces us to a model that he believes is flexible, yet comprehensive, and will spur further discussions about workplace learning evaluation methods. Griffin's model adds the elements of time and aids with understanding evaluation prior to, during, and after the learning events. Griffin's model includes evaluation elements and clearly states criteria for each phase of the learning model. Providing examples also aids instructional designers when creating and managers with understanding. In 2008, Sheckley, Curhan, and Grenier created a very simple model that explains professional learning. They call this the TRIO model. The researchers believe a critical need exists for a model that practitioners can use to support effective and efficient professional learning in genuine work contexts. The TRIO model of professional learning shows promise in addressing this need. The model is consistent with theories that emphasize the multidimensional and interdependent nature of individual, social, and organizational learning. Sheckley, Curhan, and Grenier believe individual attributes affect engagement in key experiences and shape perception of environmental affordances. In turn, key experiences impact mental models that inform metacognition and self-regulation strategies and the social construction of knowledge. Environment is a factor, as feedback, challenges, and supports provide opportunities to test assumptions, underlying mental models, and affect individual motivation. The model describes a fourth component, the learning space where all three components are present and suggests that optimal professional learning is possible only when it simultaneously attends to the individual attributes, key experiences, and environmental affordances just described. These models have not evolved in the last few years, and no new models have been presented. However, Jane Hart remains adamant that change in workplace learning is occurring and is becoming more individualized with workers taking personal responsibility for acquiring new knowledge and skills. In turn, self-directed learners self-organize and self-manage, which is slowly changing how organizations view workplace learning. Jane Hart goes on to say that design, delivery, and management of workplace learning experiences is modernizing, and there are five aspects to this. Modernizing classroom training experiences so they become interactive and collaborative, technology-friendly events. Then there is modernizing online learning experiences so that content is no longer about pressing the next button to move to the next slide, but about creating content in more modern and appealing formats and, where appropriate, guiding social learning experiences. Modernizing assessment and learning management is next, so it's no longer about attendance, participation, and completion, but about achieving performance outcomes using real-world methods and activities. There is also modernizing learning support, so that participants are offered a range of different mechanisms that they can tap into to help them before, during, and after the training. Finally, modernizing a blended program, so that provides a more flexible program that allows the individual to be guided, but not constrained to the resources and activities on offer. Although new models are not emerging, the four models presented here are robust and provide us with a sense that workplace learning is evolving quicker than the new models attempt to explain the change. Models, however, are merely ideas of what the future may hold based on known conditions and forecasting. The advent of new technology quickly changes how and when training occurs. Additionally, new trends in learning, information dissemination, knowledge and acquisition, and honing skills change rapidly in our connected world. This fluid and dynamic environment makes it challenging to create accurate models of the future for workplace learning. There are two synthesis questions for this video. Think of all four models and frameworks. Do you see any of these in use in the foreseeable or long-term future? If not, what elements from the models and frameworks would you include?
The four models presented here are a small representation of frameworks and models that look at the challenges, concepts, and future of workplace learning. Hopefully this video provides you with a jumping off point where you can begin looking at other frameworks and models and help you decide which ones to use and how to use them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.